Hey everybody, welcome back to the Security Brief. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the nine steps you can take right now to significantly increase the security posture of your Apple Macintosh computer. So um, this isn't everything that you can do. There's a whole lot of other things you can do, but these are some pretty high impact, easy, to, easy things you can do right now. So let's go, starting with number one updating your apps. So the first thing you want to make sure is the applications that you're using, starting with your operating system, are supported. So you can find out what operating system you're using by going to the upper left hand corner, clicking on the Apple menu about this Mac, and you'll see here I'm using Mac OS High Sierra, which is currently supported. If you want to know if it's still supported and when, when, these, uh, when the operating system is supported until, you can find this out on Apple's support page. But we are currently using supported uh, software, which is great. So now we're going to go down here to the uh, App Store, um, click on the App Store, and we're just going to check for updates. It looks like there is an update available here, and it is actually um, an update for... Um, the operating system. So um, this is a security update. So this is the kind of stuff that, um, you know, if you can set it up so it's an auto update, um, but make sure you're checking this and you're staying up to date with your operating system. Very important. Same thing with the applications. And you can see here that none of my applications that are that have been installed using the App Store uh, need an update. They've all been updated. You can see the ones that have been recently updated right here. Now, if you use some other applications that are not that you did not install through the App Store, and an example would be, say, if you're using some Microsoft products like Excel or or uh, Microsoft Word, then they they are installed directly. You you download the installer from Microsoft, so it has its own. Microsoft updater. You can set up auto update on that, which I recommend you do. Again, just kind of go through. You can go to your application folder actually by clicking Shift Command A, and it'll bring up your folder. Um, and just check the check and make sure if there's anything here that you didn't install through your um, to your Apple page. You might want to just check and turn auto update on if you can, and just check them periodically. I'd check them like every couple of weeks, every month, to make sure that the applications are up to date. So that's the first one. Number two would be to go to your screensaver and make sure that you have a screensaver turned on that will automatically come on in the event that you step away from your computer and you forget to put it asleep. So you can go up here into system preferences. You can access system preferences again through the upper left hand corner of the Apple menu, system preferences. We're going to click on desktop and screensaver here and you can see that I have it set for five minutes. Now, this is just a backup in case I forget to put the machine to sleep, but generally best practice is just to close the computer and make sure it's asleep um, when you walk away from the device. The next one is to require your password uh, after sleep or screensaver. So you can do that by going into security and privacy in your system preferences, and you can see here that I have it set so that after five seconds, um, it, it will require the password. So this means if I was to close the device and go to the washroom, somebody can't just sneak in behind me and, and type in my password. So this is good practice at your workstation at work, um, just to make sure that nobody can jump in there and access information that they're not supposed to access. Next, we're going to encrypt our hard drive. So you do that again, it's, you're in the security and privacy section of your system preferences. And the, the tool, the software that Apple has built into the operating system to allow encryption is called File Vault. So we'll click on that. Now you can see that my File Vault is already turned on, but if yours isn't, just click the on button here and it'll give you two options. You can put the decryption key, either have it stored in your iCloud account or it'll, it'll display it on the screen and you can write it on a piece of paper and put it in a safe place, uh, like a safe or somewhere like that at home or in your office. Um, I, I typically prefer to have them uh, have the encryption keys on a piece of paper and store them in the safe for our business instead of having them all broken out over a variety of different iCloud accounts. But it's really uh, you know, your choice of how you do that. The key thing is to have it encrypted. And that will make it so that if somebody steals the device, they won't be able to, they won't be able to access the information that's stored on it. Okay, so next we're going to activate our firewall. So again, in security and privacy in the system preferences, I'm going to click on the firewall tab here. See that my firewall is currently off. I'm just going to click turn the firewall on. And we can also click here for the firewall options. The most secure would be to block all incoming connections. But that's going to cause some problems if you're using things like a DHCP server or if you're using Bonjour or if you have some IPsec services or something like that. So now you could try this if you want to go the most secure option, but be conscious, test out your applications. If this makes it so that some of your applications don't work, then you may want to, you may want to select the option that I have here, which is automatically allow built-in software to receive incoming connections and allow downloaded signed software to receive incoming connections. So this is, this is what I need to do to use the software applications that I have on my computer. Again, I'm following the best practices of only using supported software, only using software from reputable vendors, and always making sure that my software is up to date.
Next, we're going to review our privacy settings. So that happens again, still in the security and privacy tab of system preferences. We'll click on the privacy tab and you can see my, um, I have my location services enabled for, for some applications. So I use it for wallet and I do use it for calendar. Um, I use it because I use some of those features in there that, that, are, that are useful to me. If you're not using those features, you can turn that off very easily um, and that will reduce the amount of information that's being shared. And the same goes through all these applications. So you can go through and, and, and ensure that you're not sharing anything that you're, you're uncomfortable sharing. The next thing would be install antivirus. Um, I have a Vera antivirus installed on my machine. I'm using the, the free version right now. Um, paid versions are usually better. Freeze better than nothing. There's a whole bunch of different reputable vendors, so you can search the pros and cons or which, which vendors are better. This stuff changes a little bit over time. I like anti, uh, the Avera antivirus because at the time of this video being recorded, it was one of the lightest ones on my CPU, so it's pretty transparent. I don't notice any, any delays or any, any performance issues there. Do not believe that there's no viruses for Apple computers. There are a lot of them out there, so it's really good practice to have a, an antivirus system in your machine and make sure that it's selected for, uh, it's, it's on for auto update and it's always doing the real-time protection. So when you get emails and there's attachments, it's scanning them to make sure that there's no viruses in those attachments. Now we're going to make sure that uh, auto login is disabled. Again, back to system preferences. Now on default on most modern operating systems, this is selected uh, as off by default, but just to be sure, we're going to go double check. So click on users and groups there at the bottom of system preferences. You see the login options right here, and you can see that that is off. If it were on, then somebody could actually turn the computer on. If it was off or restart the computer, it's going to automatically log in without having to enter a password, which is obviously not the, the secure option. Okay, next we can create a standard account. So by doing this, you go back into users and groups, and so right now I'm in an administrative account, which I'm using to set up and configure uh, my antivirus and install applications. But for your day-to-day -day work, it's a good practice to just create another account. So we're gonna, I'm gonna log in here to System Preferences and create a new account. We'll call it Darren um, Account. This is gonna be the account that I'll work on on a regular basis. Account name, put in a password. Okay, and then there, that account's now created. I can just go over here and log into that new account that I just uh, created there. And then by doing that, it, it, it just creates another line of defense because you need to be logged in as an administrator to do certain tasks like install software. So it just creates another line of defense there um, so that it would actually require you to take that extra step to log in as the administrative account user to make uh, a, a new installation. So if you accidentally received an installer and clicked on it, this is gonna be one more step that's gonna protect you from accidentally installing something you don't want to. So to recap, the nine things you can do to drastically improve the security of your machine is update your apps, set up a screensaver, make sure that the password requirement is there so when the screensaver or sleep is activated that you know, either immediately or within a couple of seconds it's requiring you to enter that password. Make sure you turn on File Vault to encrypt your hard drive, turn the firewall on in system preferences, review all your privacy settings, install an antivirus application, disable auto login, and create a standard user account. I hope that was helpful. Please like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.